Shall we get started? Okay. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining the weekly Wednesday webinar, proudly brought to you by the CHSE. Um, so as you may know, uh, this, the CHSE weekly Wednesday webinar, uh, this year we're focusing on different literacies. And um, this is the second month. Um, the theme for May is on feedback literacy. And today's the introduction session or a prelude for um, our theme for this month. Um, today we'll be focusing on feedback literacy and its associated skills. Um, we'll be covering the crucial components relating to feedback literacy. Um, we'll be presenting a framework for um, feedback literacy, and we'll also be looking at how uh, the importance of feedback literacy and how it can um, enhance educational outcomes for students. Um, Christine, you can move to the next slide. Okay, uh, so um, today's session, like I mentioned, is on feedback literacy and its associated skills. Um, we won't be really covering any of the activities. And now, for example, how to, how you can incorporate it. Um, that will be done in next week's session. We will be covering the types of activities to facilitate feedback literacy. And the following week, we'll be looking at it from a technology and able standpoint. We will be showing you tools that you can use in your LMS to facilitate feedback literacy. Um, so that being said, um, I think I should also introduce myself for those who don't know me. My name is Arshad and I'm a learning experience designer uh, working at the CHSE. Um, I'm going to now move on to my presentation. Also going to just switch off my camera if you don't mind. Um, so I'd like to start off by asking a question. Um, and that question is, um, how would you describe your feedback process? And I'm going to put a link in the chat um, where you can answer this question. Um, so if you click on this link, it will take you to this Mentimeter page where you'll be able to type in your response. Um, so I want you to just think about um, how you would describe your feedback process. It might be different in um, different types of assessments, um, but um, in general, um, how would you describe it? Um, if you haven't provided feedback before, um, then you can also just um, think about uh, what what a process would be like for you if you were to um, engage in it. Okay, so I'll give you about two minutes. Um, OK, so it looks like we have four responses. The first one says didactic. Um, so um, this would be uh, more, more instructive, I think, where you would be trying to teach um, the student something. Um, the next one says provide overall assessment, positive, then detailed comments and suggestions, and then end up uh, end with a positive closing. Okay, um, and then someone says provide detailed comments on good points and points for improvement, along with the rubric for common points and main things looked for in the work. Okay, and the last one says general feedback in class 
enter rubrics for individual students i thought design software once upon a time before i became an instructional designer okay um so um these are all interesting responses and i would like to come back to these responses a bit later in this presentation um so that we can maybe unpack them a bit more so um i'm now going to move on to my presentation okay so um i think the first thing that we should start off with is try and define and conceptualize feedback so um one of the key challenges that we find uh, what managing feedback in higher education is that there is a, a big debate over what the term actually means. And the, the term feedback can be broad and it also can be used in different ways and by different stakeholders and also in different contexts. So uh, one conventional way to, to view feedback is simply information provided um, by an agent, for example, a teacher, peer, or, se or self, about aspects of performance or understanding. Um, so this is how feedback is commonly interpreted by teachers and students. And while it's important for, st for students to receive information about their performance in order to improve, um, this is often insufficient for the impl implementation of effective feedback because students also need motivation and opportunities to make sense of the comments that are provided to them so that they can use it for improvement purposes. So um, this definition is quite limited and it doesn't give a holistic uh, definition. So um, let's try to define it again. So according to the recent literature on feedback in higher education, um, a greater focus must be placed on students' actions in response to performance information from teachers, peers, and also their own self-evaluation. Um, so for the information to lead to action, um, students need opportunities to apply this feedback to future tasks in order to inform the development of their learning. Um, so at this definition and we can come to something that is more holistic which is our feedback is conceptualized as a process whereby students are proactive in seeking making sense of and using comments on their performance or their approaches to learning and a fundamental dimension of this conceptualization is that a feedback process is not solely characterized by the input of comments but also by the impact in terms of changes to students' behavior, motivation, or learning strategies. Um, so if we so so far we've looked at two different ways about thinking about feedback. So the first one was more focused on inputs, which is the provision of information or comments to students. And the second one is more focused on interaction, student sense making and the outputs in terms of the actions that students would take in the future. So um, the first one, which we call the old paradigm, the focus is on monologic feedback, is the transmission of comments. And this is seen as a cognitivist interpretation or representation. Um, so in this old paradigm model, um, the role of feedback in the student process is not really fully activated. Um, more emphasis in the old paradigm is placed on the provision of a high quality information, but there's also, um, you could say, a danger that uh, providing such one-way communication does not sufficiently allow the student to engage with and act upon the comments that are provided to them. So that brings us to the new paradigm. Um, and 
The new paradigm model of feedback is more learning focused and student centered. Um, so in this model, students are actively involved in meaning making on the basis of interactions with, with their teachers or with their peers or even their own evaluative judgment. Um, and this uh, new paradigm model is aligned with a social constructivist approach to feedback. Um, and uh, this a social constructivist approach is the dominant theory that guides of, that is currently guiding feedback research and it focuses more on the interdependence of social and individual processes in the co-construction of knowledge. Um, also with the social constructivist approach, um, shared and individual interpretations are developed through this interaction. So feedback is a social practice that is guided by dialogue and it's influenced by the relationships between the participants. So in the higher education context, this could mean collaboration between teachers and students in uh, specific learning communities. Okay, so uh, now I would like to go back to our responses that we had over here. Um, and I would like you to think about um, these processes, whether they fit into the new paradigm or the old paradigm. Um, remember that with the new paradigm, it's important that the feedback provided to students um, helps to prompt them to take action so that they uh, know what to do in the future to improve their learning. Um, if anyone wants to jump in now, maybe. Um, give some of your thoughts on um, any of these responses. Um, if you provided one, maybe you can tell us if you think your approach fits in more with the old paradigm or with the new paradigm. Yes, Carol. Oh, Ashad. So I'm trying to think, and I think that the difficulty, I think it's the new paradigm is good. I think because I often feel like I provide a million comments and then students don't look at anything. So the focus on the impact of the comments and the impact of the feedback is good. But <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I would do differently because I think I'm probably sitting more in the old paradigm. I give the comments, but I don't actually know what students do with it. I'm trying to figure out what what we would need to, or how we would need to upskill students so that they shift to actually be using the comments. Or how would I need to be giving my comments differently? to be more in line with the new paradigm. And I'm not sure what that would be. So I don't have a very useful comment, but you've definitely made me think, so thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Carol. Um, so yeah, um, in the next sessions, we'll be looking at exactly what type of activities we can use for uh, to help students with their feedback literacy. So. Um, in the next slides that I'll be showing you, I will be covering what exactly is feedback literacy. And it's important for students to have this feedback literacy um, in order for them to know what to do with the, com with the comments that they receive. Um, um, I have an example hand. of how a uh, different so i taught design software once upon a time uh, 
Um, and the way we the assessments was set up was that they were in their subsequent um, assignments. They actually submit the same thing a few times. Um, because they have to show improvement based on how they implement their feedback in their final submission. So it um, was really interesting because it really forced me also to give very practical and useful advice and also to tell students where they um, are doing well rather than a one and done situation. It was a completely different way of assessment. Thank you for that, Christine. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a really interesting process. And to me, it sounds like it fits in more with the new paradigm. Um, because the students are prompted towards action. So I don't think there are any more hands, so I'll switch back to my presentation. Okay, so um, we've spoken a lot about the new paradigm and the old paradigm. So uh, one thing to note here is that the argument that I'm trying to make or that the literature is trying to make is that we should not get rid of the old paradigm completely because to a certain extent, this is the basis upon which the new paradigm um, can or the approaches to for the new paradigm can be built. So, uh, for example, if you look at uh, feedback as a process or as a system, the output is dependent on the nature and quality of the input. So, um, the comments that teachers provide the students um, are, import are an important prerequisite for the impact of the feedback processes. Um, however, the problem only arises when feedback is seen as just comments or information and no consideration is given to what happens next or what action students should take. Um, so if we want to position students as active participants in the feedback processes, we need to design opportunities for them to grasp what feedback actually means for their own learning. So some of the features of the new, uh, new paradigm feedback approach would include things like peer interaction, dialogue, sense making, and co-construction. Um, and all of these, once again, um, align with the social constructivist learning theories. And these things require students to develop feedback literacy. And feedback literacy can be defined as the understandings, capacities, and dispositions needed to make sense of comments on performance and use them for enhancement purposes. Um, so let's look at feedback literacy in a bit more detail. Um, so why should we focus on feedback literacy? Um, so by helping students to for, to develop their feedback literacy, they can become more engaged, proactive, and independent learners. Um, it can also help them to build the intellectual confidence to seek out and engage in dialogues about these subjects. Um, it could allow them to recognize the skills they are developing through their studies. Um, it could help them to develop the understanding of and critical engagement with the subjects. And it could also help them to feel seen, heard, and supported through their learning journey. Um, because um, if they recognize how feedback, um, if they recognize how the feedback they receive that um, has helped them to learn and develop, um, that could also help to um, improve their feedback literacy. Okay, so uh, let's unpack feedback literacy in a bit more detail now. So there are four features of student feedback literacy um, that are 
appreciating feedback, making judgments, managing effect, and taking action. Um, so uh, these four um, aspects of feedback literacy uh, forms uh, what can be called the fr a framework for student feedback literacy. Um, so now we can look at each one in a bit more detail. Um, the first one is appreciating feedback. So um, this refers to students being able to recognize the value of feedback um, and also understanding the active role in the process. Um, students often have various conceptions of feedback and um, often um, this is not so, um, you could say, sophisticated because um, it, the feedback that they receive mainly focuses on information or feedback as telling. Um, students sometimes also fail to recognize or appreciate the forms of feedback um, other than written comments on submitted work. Um, so a feedback approaches that emphasize feedback as telling um, are in, insufficient because students are often not equipped to be able to decode or to act on, on these statements. Um, so uh, th the comments that they received often remain invisible. Um, so feedback literacy demands that uh, the students acquire the academic language necessary for understanding um, and thinking with complex ideas. Um, technology can also be used for to enhance feedback approaches, um, and they are often welcomed by students because they are able to uh, uh, provide students with timely and convenient feedback. And according to the literature, uh, students generally value um, personalized and engaging uh, feedback, especially if it's in the form of audio feedback, um, because this um, ca this can increase their engagement, because they often f uh, would uh, revisit the audio feedback multiple times. Um, so, also something to note is that while technology enabled approaches to feedback. Um, sound promising. There are also some risks that the process can be simply be used as a process of feedback as telling, um, where just comments are provided by the teacher. Um, but in a future session, in um, uh, not next week, the following week, we'll be looking at tools that you can use in your LMS um, to facilitate feedback literacy. Okay, so um, the next uh, feedback uh, component is making judgments. So in order for uh, students to be able to um, make the most out of their feedback processes, they need to be able to develop evaluative judgment. Um, so this would be the ability to make decisions about the quality of their work and also the work of others. Um, so in order for them to become more accurate in judging the standards of their own work, uh, they need to be provided with extended opportunities for self-evaluation so that they can improve their judgment over time. Um, for example, producing an assignment would require students to plan, draft, or also redraft while making adjustments based on their ongoing judgments about the quality of, of their work that they've provided. Um, also, students uh, often review the, their progress on tasks as uh, internal feedback that, that is generated by um, by while they are working on this or on their assessments or their tasks or activities. Um, there's also external teacher feedback, which can be beneficial um, 
which usually is beneficial because it focuses on supporting the students to refine um, their own internal feedback. Um, and this kind of feedback can you have a, can you have more in, um, more impact on on their learning than just the usual feedback as providing information or comments. Okay, then the next one is managing effect. So um, effect refers to the feelings, emotions, and attitudes, and um, something that you, that you might find is that students would have defensive responses to the feedback that you provide to them, especially when the, the comments you provide them are critical or their grades are low. Um, in situations like this, the feedback can provoke negative effective reactions and can also threaten their identity. So um, the way students manage the emotion, their emotional equilibrium would also impact their engagement with the comments that they received. Um, so one way that um, this can be mediated is by the, the relationships that students have with their teachers um, and, with, uh, and with other participants that are involved in the feedback process. So if there's a um, good co-constructive co relationship between the students and the teachers, um, this can help to um, enhance the um, the way that they received their feedback in terms of their emotions, feelings, or attitudes. Um, also, something to note is that um, the aim of feedback is often to challenge students to adopt new perspectives. Um, but um, sometimes students do not welcome this challenge. And for that reason, critical feedback um, can have either a positive or a negative impact, uh, depending on a range of factors, such as their uh, motivation or their ability to handle their emotions constructively. Also, the tone in which Feedback is shared is one of the most critical aspects of how students react to feedback. So when, when teachers uh, provide feedback in writing and speech, and if they signify that they care about their learners, then student engagement with feedback is enhanced. Um, also, if a trusting atmosphere is established, then the students are more likely to develop the confidence and faith to reveal what they do not fully understand. Okay, um, and then the last one is taking action. So in order for students to make use of the, f of the feedback that they receive, they need to um, have a, a list of strategies that they can use to act productively. Um, so in the recent literature, um, it was found that um, students um, report awareness of strategies for tackling issues identified through comments, but they often find difficulty in carrying them out. So unless students can see themselves as agents of their own learning or agents of their own um, agents of um, what they can change uh, and be able to develop their own identities as proactive learners, um, then they might not be able to make productive use of the comments about their work. Um, so without the skills to interpret the comments that they receive, um, students are often un unsuccessful in acting on the feedback that they receive. Okay, so um, now that we looked at the four aspects that make up the feedback literacy framework. Um, we know that uh, students with a well-developed feedback literacy would be able to appreciate their, uh, their own active role in the feedback process. They would be able to continuously 
develop their capacities in making sound judgments about their work and uh, they would be able to manage their emotions in positive ways. So um, these three aspects of the feedback literacy framework are interrelated. And it is also proposed that a combination of the three features, uh, appreciating feedback, making judgments, and managing effect, um, would maximize the potential for students to take action. Um, so I would like to stop here now and see if there's any questions, comments from anyone. Okay, uh, no questions. Okay, so uh, what I would like to now do is, so at the beginning, I asked you to um, think of and describe your own uh, process of feedback. Um, but now I'd like to show you and get you to think about how you can evaluate your own uh, feedback practice. So um, I will also share these um, in the chat. Um, but I'll just go through some of them that you can use to evaluate your uh, feedback practice. Just make it a bit bigger as we go through it. Um, so if you use this to evaluate your own feedback practice, um, you would ask yourself how often do you use the following in your own practice? So um, how often do you discuss with students the purpose and meaning of feedback? Um, do you encourage students to recognize feedback exchanges beyond some of the feedback on written work? Um, do you support students to develop a range of strategies to implement their feedback? Um, do you consider the emotional impact of feedback on students? Um, do you invite students to request feedback on specific elements of their work? Or do you support students to develop their skills to evaluate their own work? Um, do you provide opportunities for students to engage in peer feedback exchange exchanges? Um, do you provide them with opportunities to contribute to the design of assessment criteria or rubrics? Um, do you consider opportunities for implementation of feedback at the point of assessment design? Um, and do you relate feedback to uh, program learning outcomes, graduate attributes, as well as module or unit learning outcomes? Um, how often do you use technology to facilitate student uptake of feedback? Um, and do you seek evidence of the impact of your feedback on students' learning? Um, so these questions can help you to um, evaluate your own practice. Okay, hey, um, and then the next thing that you can use um, in preparation for the next session next week, we will be covering different types of activities that you can use to um, promote feedback literacy in your students. Um, so these are the uh, four aspects of feedback literacy that I mentioned previously. So um, you can use this to try and think of uh, what you do or could do in your practice to um, facilitate feedback literacy in your students based on um, all four of these aspects. Um, so I will share these in the chat. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Uh, do you have any thoughts on maybe after looking at those questions, um, how would you evaluate your own feedback process? Um, if you previously um, provided a response to the question I asked at the beginning, um, is there anything that you would like to now maybe add?
Um, yes, Avivé. Thanks, Ashad. I think uh, I've been thinking more about Carol's question as well. Um, where feedback is provided, but the question now is how do you actually get students to engage with that feedback? If you leave it to the students, you know, only students who are really proactive, they they will literally come back to you and say, I saw this comment, but I didn't understand what you meant. But not every single student does that. So I've just been trying to think about how best do we get students to engage with it. I don't know if this has been done, but, you know, one could actually create an assignment based on that to get them to engage with that feedback. Um, I don't know if, you know, it's possible to even put marks on it to see if that will then improve engagement, oh. to see how they they are assessing the feedback and what do they do about it. Um, that could be maybe another thing to think about, but I wonder if there are other ideas or, or what people have actually seen out there, what's being done to get people to engage with that feedback. But thank you. Thank you for that, Avivé. Um, so um, I think one of the important things is that um, students um, should be given the opportunity um, to um, see themselves as agents of their own learning and change. Um, so they need to develop their own identities as proactive learners so that they can make a better use of the uh, feedback that is provided to them. Um, I think one of the a useful thing that uh, teachers can use um, to encourage students to use feedback is to uh, maybe design their curriculum and assessments in a way that um, facilitates students processing or implementation of the feedback. Um, I hope that answers it. I uh, don't know if anyone else has any other comments or answers to your question of you. Okay, also, thank you for your comment, Carol. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Um, um, I don't think there's any other questions. Um, so I guess we can end our session here about 15 minutes early. Um, also, just another reminder about uh, session next week. Um, we'll be covering uh, different types of activities that you can uh, use to facilitate feedback literacy. Um, and hopefully in that session, we will unpack exactly um, how you can um, help students to um, use the feedback that you provide them and act upon it. So thank you all once again for joining. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.